Hey guys, this is Video for Charlie back at you with another introduction to Premiere tutorial. This is the final one of our introduction to Premiere course, going over how to export your project. Now that you've cut everything together, you've inserted your audio, you made sure that everything sounds good, it looks good, you're ready to go, you want to see how your video looks on the big screen. Well, this is how you do it. Go ahead and open up the timeline or a sequence that you want to export. You will go ahead and mark your in and out points on the timeline, just like you would a source clip. Now once your in and out points are marked, you can use the hotkey command M. That's going to bring up this little prompt here. It's going to ask you how you want to export the actual video. So you can see here that format gives you a few options. Depending on what you click, it's going to give you further options that you can go to. Now to export something for web, which is generally what most people are doing on here, you want to do it at H.264. Now you can see the presets have changed. And Premiere is actually really good at providing presets. There's a ton of them here. You can see it has anything from Android to Apple TV. You got some just standard HD settings. And even down here at the bottom, you got Vimeo and YouTube settings that are specific to those sites. I found that just selecting the YouTube 1080p option often works just fine. I might modify a few things here or there, but generally it turns out pretty good. Once again, you can also use this preset to create your own pre to start creating your own preset. So for this example, I'm going to use the YouTube 1080p HD preset and go down these settings here. So video wise, you can see it gives you width and height. You can also match your source. That's always a safe bet. And it'll just gray out all the other options because now it's just going to match everything to your source. If you don't want to do that, you can deselect what you don't want to match and you can change it depending on how you want to actually export your video. This can be a little risky if you're not familiar with video codecs, but it could also be handy if you're referencing a document, say from YouTube or from Vimeo, and you want to get some specific settings in there. For now, I'm just going to go ahead and do match source. And I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to leave render at maximum depth unchecked. I'm not really using any crazy raw footage or anything, so I don't really need this. However, if you are, sometimes it's worth check marking this box. Then you're going to go into the important settings for, especially for web exports. There's the bitrate settings. Now, some people like to use CBR, some people like to use VBR one pass, other people like to use VBR two pass. VBR two pass is basically VBR one pass, but it does two passes. Um, it can be a little more secure in some ways, but it also takes more time. So for now, I'm just going to leave it at VBR one pass. And Although YouTube does accept 16, I'm just going to do 8 because my footage isn't that amazing anyway, and I don't need it to be that high. Now, the lower the number, obviously, the more it's going to compress the footage. So the less quality it's going to be, but the faster it's going to play. The higher it is, so if I do 16, it's going to be better quality, but it's going to also take a little more time to play. 16 is usually the maximum that I'll really want to go with this. Anything above that, you're risking that the amount of time it takes to load is going to be slower than the actual play time for the video. Now, keyframe is another important setting that people often forget. They just leave it unchecked. I tend to checkmark this and change it to whatever the frame rate that I'm doing. So in this case, 24. There's other settings that people recommend. You can go ahead and look up online what people are saying are the best settings or even just try to experiment yourself and see what turns out the best. These are just some settings that I've used before for video. We're obviously not doing VR, so I don't have to check mark that. And I'm going to go ahead and check mark use maximum render quality. Now you'll notice at the bottom, it actually gives you an estimated file size, which is nice because that way you can know if the file's too big to upload to YouTube or Vimeo or any one of those services. Up here, you can also select some different options. You can go to effects. You can actually apply a LUT to the footage, if you're familiar with that. You can 
conform certain elements of the footage. You can have an image overlay. You can have a name overlay. So say if you're exporting dailies, you want to go ahead and just apply some elements there. You can. Time code as well, good for dailies. So it's good to explore these options, see what's available to you. Most likely, Premiere will offer it. But for the most part, you can leave the effects check marks unchecked if you're just exporting a regular video. Audio-wise, these settings are usually pretty good. They're set to the preset, and I find them to work just fine. And we're not really going to be working with any of these other options here, so I wouldn't worry about it. Once you have all of your settings complete, you can select where to save the file by clicking on the output name up here, that's highlighted blue, and it'll open up your finder window. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new folder and name it 00 exports. That way it's always going to show up on top. I know that's where all of my exports are going to go. And I'm going to save. And now there's two options that you have here. You can either queue or you can export. What queue does is it opens up Adobe Media Encoder. It's a separate program that simply is there to export footage. When you click export, it's going to use Premiere to export the footage itself. Now, I personally like to use Q because then I can have my computer exporting the footage with Media Encoder and still be working within Premiere on other projects or just simply doing something else. It doesn't tie up Premiere like it would if I were to hit export. So for the sake of example, I'm going to click on Q. You'll see it's preparing data for export. It's exporting data. And now it's going to pop up with Adobe Media Encoder. All right. So now you see that it's imported the sequence. It's imported all of our settings. Everything should be good. We shouldn't have to touch anything, and now it's ready to go. Now, I'm not really going to go into this too, too much because it's probably worth you just exploring, but the Adobe Media Encoder interface allows you to actually export your footage without actually having to go into Premiere. So if you already have your in and out points marked and sequences, you can actually just pull up the sequence by going through your media browser, going to projects, and then, and then importing the project to here. It'll ask you what sequence you want to export, and you can see sample sequence one, the one that we're trying to export right now, is available. So if you want to just do this completely from media encoder, that is an option. You can also see that all the same presets that you had when in the export prompt in Premiere are also available over here in Media Encoder. The two programs do sync up with one another very well. And like I said, Media Encoder does not tie up Premiere, so it allows you to still work within Premiere, although your computer will be working pretty hard. So I would recommend only doing it if you're working on a Mac Pro or above. Now, before we go ahead and hit the play button up here to start the queue, I want to make a special note to you guys that actually the reason that this is called a queue is because you actually can create a queue of videos to export. So let's say I want to export sequence one as well as sequence two and sequence three. I can go ahead and do that. Let's just go ahead and do stock footage because sequence three is not ready. I can go ahead and set my settings. Make sure that it's saving to the right spot. And now when I start, it's going to start rendering one after the other until all three are rendered. You'll see that it has a progress bar, shows you which one's going, shows you a little preview of what's exporting, shows you the elapsed time, remaining time, all that information. Now that this one's finished, it's going to go ahead and give me a check mark, telling me that it's been completed successfully, and it's going to move on to the next one. So with these tools, you should be able to export the footage that you have put together. 
And that's about it, guys. So at this point, you should know how to set up a project, import footage, customize your workspace, cut together a piece, edit any audio you might need to, as well as export a project. It's been a pleasure. Had a lot of fun with you guys. This is Video Fort Charlie signing off. You guys have a good one.